Good day. My name is Jubel Mendeville from AB Foreign Service 201. And in this video, I'll be talking about the summary of my research paper entitled China's Debt Trap Diplomacy Effects of Having High Diplomatic Debts in Settling Territorial Disputes on the West Philippine Sea. Debt trap diplomacy is the type of diplomacy wherein projects or loans are being offered on terms that are too difficult for poor governments to repay, forcing them to concede political or economic concessions. In the case of the Philippines, it is deemed that a debt trap diplomacy is unlikely to happen because at least prior COVID-19 pandemic, the country's economic fundamentals are actually enough to protect the country from the dangers of high debt. With China's continuous intrusions in the Philippines' exclusive economic zone at present, does having high diplomatic debts has an effect on the possible steps that can be taken in regaining our resources in the West Philippine Sea? With reference to the other countries who fell under the aforementioned debt trap diplomacy, there is the issue regarding the Hambantota port in Sri Lanka wherein the Sri Lankan government were given no choice but to just lease the said port to the Chinese for the next 99 years for failing to repay China for the construction of the Hambantota port. According to Census and Economic Information Center or CIC, in December 2020, the Philippine government's debt accounted for 54.5% of the country's nominal GDP, which is higher than the 51.2% in the previous quarter. In here, it could be deemed that the Philippines ended 2020 with a debt-to-GDP ratio of 54.5%, the highest in 14 years, with outstanding debt of 9.795 trillion. With all this data at hand, it appears that it will take roughly 10 to 11 years for our country to return to pre-pandemic condition. Due to the additional borrowings and the lower peso, the national government's debt stock reached a new record of 10.41 trillion in February this year. Nevertheless, despite the fact that the debt ratio is likely to peak in 2021, economists have pointed out that credit rating agencies and international lenders will only be concerned if it exceeds 60%. According to Hill S. Beltran, the national government debt will not exceed 60% of GDP. But he also states that it will still depend on the formulated fiscal policies and how the virus situation will develop in general. It couldn't be denied indeed that the Philippines' economy is becoming increasingly reliant on China. In the long run, the Philippines may find itself with high interest geopolitical debts as a result of accepting Beijing's assistance in resolving the health crisis and its economic consequences. However, with the COVID-19 debt toll rising and with all the financial resources limited, the government may have limited choice but to buy Chinese vaccines in the hopes of saving lives and improving our country's financial recovery. Looking into the worst-case scenario, the Philippines might have to make political and economic concessions to China in order to repay annual interest or at least in order to restructure such a significant amount of debt. After President Rodrigo Duterte claimed that Manila owes China for its aid, including donated COVID-19 vaccines, Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto said that the Philippines should not have a misplaced sense of indebtedness to China, saying that although we should indeed be grateful for their help regarding the vaccination program, we still paid for it, so a sense of indebtedness to China would be really unnecessary. Nevertheless, despite his relationship with China, the president was still quick to clarify that he would not give away the country's sovereign land to China no matter what happens. Taking into consideration the current situation wherein the Chinese-funded infrastructure project seems to have failed, it is indeed vital for our president at present to reposition his stance already and reconsider his China strategy. China cannot be expected to conduct due diligence on the Philippines' behalf. Given the fact that Chinese development aid is recipient-led, the Philippines must indeed bear a bigger share of the burden of ensuring that projects are practical and financially feasible. Philippines must also bargain harder and more wisely with the Chinese partners, who are primarily motivated by profit, and take the lead in ensuring that the local people will benefit from the development. In September 2021, 
Our president should also bring up the 2016 arbitral verdict again at the United Nations General Assembly, while also welcoming the positions of United States, Japan, and other relevant countries against China's claims in the South China Sea. Philippines should also encourage fellow Association of Southeast Asian Nation members who also have high diplomatic debts such as Malaysia and Indonesia to unite and confront the Chinese government together regarding the China's predatory lending practices. China has a pattern of funding infrastructure projects in poorer countries in exchange for regional access. At the end of the day, it should be kept in mind that no amount of Chinese donations aid or loans will be enough in exchange for the Filipino people suffering and for the Philippine territory. Nevertheless, it is never too late for the Philippine government to change direction, promote its interests, and protect its sovereignty. In the end, it would be best if the territorial disputes will be settled through the help of international assistance. Philippines should now reduce its dependence on China through diversifying its international cooperation better. Furthermore, we should also try to see if our country will be able to re renegotiate the terms and conditions on Chinese projects, just like how the Malaysia was able to convince China on reducing the cost of the East Coast Rail Link by one-third. Active foreign aid is vital for the Philippines. It's important to note that alliances aren't always a terrible thing. It seems like this is the best time for the world to see and hear about the actual use of the Philippine-US Visiting Forces Agreement or VFA and the Mutual Defense Treaty or MDT. 